This is a tutorial video on how to identify igneous rocks. Igneous rocks are defined based on their composition, which are the minerals present, and the texture of the rock, which is largely defined by the size of the minerals. Uh, remember that the terms that we use for silicate rocks, like igneous rocks, are felsic and mafic. So felsic rocks tend to be lighter in color, like white, uh, light grays, pinks, And mafic rocks tend to be darker in color, like blacks and uh, dark grays and green colors. If we can identify the minerals in the rock, then we know whether it's mafic or felsic or intermediate. But if the minerals are too, be fi too fine to be identified, then we can go by the color. The size of the minerals in an igneous rock are determined by how fast the magma or lava cools. Deep in the earth, where the surrounding country rocks are warmer, the magma body is insulated so the heat escapes more slowly and the minerals have time to grow larger. A very large, deep pluton might take centuries or even a million, million years for the minerals to completely crystallize. and that allows the minerals to get quite large, like in this rock. If the magma makes it to the surface and flows as lava, then it cools in a matter of days or maybe months, and this doesn't allow the minerals very much time to get large enough for us to be able to see with the naked eye. And so the rock tends to have a less of a shiny uh, look to it because the rock is, the minerals are too small for us to see their cleavage and luster. So there's different terms used to describe this uh, size of the minerals. And uh, phanaritic is a term that refers to very large visible mineral crystals. This, this, or this. And so even if so, this rock all the minerals are about the same color, we can tell that the minerals are large and visible to the naked eye because we can see the cleavage uh, faces and the glassy luster of the silicate minerals. If the minerals cool very quickly um, in a lava at their surface, we say that the texture is aphanitic, meaning that we cannot see the individual mineral, mineral crystals with the naked eye. And so the rock has kind of a a dull uh, appearance because we can't see the cleavage and luster of the minerals with the naked eye. Porphyritic is a term that's used to refer to rocks that have a combination of mineral sizes. This is an example of a rock with porphyritic texture. So what happens uh, in this case is that the minerals that are higher on Bowen's reaction series that can withstand higher temperatures are cooling and forming uh, very large crystals uh, because they're cooling very slowly in a large, deep pluton, um, but they're swimming in a kind of pool of liquid magma. If the magma rises then to the surface and flows as lava, then all of the other mineral crystals have to form very quickly and they're very small. So we say that this is a porphyritic texture. And this is considered an extrusive rock because its final stage of cooling is at the surface. When we're talking about uh, porphyritic rocks, the very large crystals, which is usually uh, this one mineral, they're called phenocrysts. The tiny minerals that we can't see that are around the phenocryst are called uh, a ground mass surrounding the phenocryst. Igneous rocks can have other textures. Uh, more specifically, extrusive igneous rocks can have more textures because the lava is not always flowing effusively and uh, allowing minerals to form. Sometimes the lava has to cool very quickly. This is common when the lava erupts underwater. And they, they cool so quickly that no minerals can form, no crystalline structure it forms, and instead it forms a volcanic glass. So volcanic glass uh, 
forms a, an igneous rock called obsidian. And obsidian is usually dark in color, black, sometimes kind of a mahogany color. This doesn't mean that it's mafic, it's just that there are kind of dust particles trapped in the glass that infuse this very dark color to the rock. Another type of extrusive texture is when you have uh, a viscous magma and the gas bubbles that usually will rise up above the magma body and escape at the surface are trapped in uh, the cooling lava. And so the rock is very low density and because the, there are lots of holes in the rocks. This texture is called vesicular. Vesicular texture refers to extrusive igneous rocks that form during an explosive eruption where there's a lot of gas present. The individual holes in the rock are called vesicles. So the, the composition of the rock can vary. Um, if it is a felsic rock, then it's going to be lower density rock. There's more gases trapped because the lava is more viscous. And these rocks can be so lightweight, so low density, that they can even float on water. Denser forms of vesicular rocks form when gases are trapped in a, a mafic lava, as is this case, and the rock has a different name. So in general, we can name igneous rocks based on the composition or the minerals present and whether the form, rock formed extrusively or intrusively. So here's a diagram that shows some common, uh, the common uh, crystalline igneous rocks that form from magma intrusively or from lava extrusively. And they're defined based on whether they're intrusive or extrusive and also based on the silica content, which we can characterize as being felsic, high silica content, mafic, which is a relatively low silica content, um, or something in between, intermediate. There are also ultramafic igneous rocks that exist uh, mostly just in the mantle, very relatively low silica content. We don't get too many ultramafic rocks at our surface. If we know what the silica content of the magma or lava is, we can, I, we can predict which minerals will form. So in this diagram, it shows the silica content, felsic, 70% silica or greater, felsic intermediate, intermediate or mafic, or ultramafic, which is less than 45% silica content by weight. Up here shows the common uh, silicate minerals that form in these igneous rocks. So for felsic magma or lava, we might get a little bit of amphibole, a little bit of biotite and muscovite, a significant amount of sodium-rich plagioclase, um, even more significant amount of potassium-rich feldspar, and quartz. However, for a mafic rock with between 52 to 45 percent silica content, we're likely to get uh, a bit of olivine forming, uh, a significant amount of pyroxene, and some calcium-rich plagioclase. So you'll notice there are no rocks that exist that have both quartz and olivine in it because they form from magmas of different compositions. So if we put this all together, the composition and the texture of crystalline rocks, you can see that we have a names for all of these rocks. So again, extrusive rocks, uh, if they form in a, a crystalline texture, they're either aphanitic or porphyritic, and these are the names based on their silica content. If the rock formed intrusively, magma cooling below the surface, then they're always crystalline. We say that the texture is phaneritic, and then the rock name changes based on the silica content.